Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you for video number two. I'm starting to get to that point, but I came across something that was really interesting. And uh, I thought this is something I ought to put a video out because it's bleeding edge. Understand that because it's bleeding edge, they tend to bleed a little, but it's starting to show something I think is valuable. And that is in regards to how you deal with building SSD drives in such a way so that you can get the bandwidth from SSD drives, which is very, very, very fast. You know, there's a lot of bandwidth right there. But when you take it to the server and the server gets it, it tends to choke. And as you remembered in some of my other videos, these disk arrays that you see here are attached to the Dell 720 up here and basically in a nutshell they are performing at a loss. Now what I mean by they're performing at a loss is pretty simple. It's all in regards to the fact that the controller that is connecting all these discs together has a limitation and that's this stuff right here on the back. See that right there? RAM. Now the controllers in their day, mind you, were pretty doggone powerful. They can do lots of hard disks, SAS, SATA, you name it. The I.O. controllers can move about 30,000 IOPS. It's pretty impressive. But an SSD drive is so much more capable than that. So the controller becomes the bottleneck. How do you deal with that? I mean, you've got lots of disks, you've got lots of slots, and you've got lots of capacity. But when you run it up to your SAS loop, into the back of the server, you're at the mercy of the controller. Not necessarily. And that's what this is about. As I was telling you guys a few months ago, we uh, I do experimentation out here. And as you would look, I have a variety of different types of connectivity, you know, uh, DAS or direct attached storage capacities. I can do EMC, I can do Dell, I can do... NetApp, I can do, you know, open tier, I can do HP, 3PAR, Supermicro, even eSATA pairings up there from iStock and so on and so on. And I have a large array of disk capacity. So I started to think to myself, okay, that's true. I have the capacity. So what I want to do with that capacity is I want to step it down. And what that basically means is, Instead of using my controller card with a pat with a SAS loop and pairing each disk array off the next disk array and so on, so I could have 190 disks or 200 or 300 disks, I instead use multiple controllers. What do I mean, multiple controllers? Isn't there already a controller sitting on board? And don't you just use a single controller to start striping your your disks arrays together and start formulating that kind of footprint? Well, no. A long time ago, we used to have what's called channel pathways, and those channel pathways required controller I.O. interface cards. It was a long time ago, and it was on a standard called ESA. But today, we have, as you can see, the ability of having onboard controllers, which are inside the server, that usually come with the server as is, and we can also put in our own additional SAS controllers. Now, unless you've got an LSI 3200 series high or better, um, most of us are going to be buying old SAS controllers at cheap costs, and yet we still want to use what we got, right? Well, that's where this comes in. If we basically put in two controllers of the same make and model, preferably, or at least the same uh, make, um, it could be like a series 1600 and a 2100 card, but it's still LSI. Um, with that, you be, you're basically able to double your output. Remember, the operating system doesn't care because these devices, if they're HBAs, are strictly just drive devices. What's important is their pathways provide data pathwaying for writing and reading at the same time. So if you put in a high-performance SSD drive, maybe a two and a half quarter and so on, or something else, make sure 
if you're using older controllers and you got to make sure you got to do your research that they're compatible to run the SSD drives um, that you put multiple controllers in and you begin to parse out let's say 12 disks here 12 disks there 12 disks up there and granted you understand these are different standards but they all basically follow the SAS protocol and between those three controllers and these three different sets of disk sets you're actually going to see a surprising improvement on the IO bandwidth because you're not writing as much to a lot of disks while you're dealing with an IO imp impairment of limited IO. That's right ladies and gentlemen NetApp will tell you, EMC will tell you, PureStore will tell you that in today's world, it's not the drives that slow you down. Not at all. They're too fast. It's the controllers. They're the bottleneck. And, you know, when you look at SAS and how it's designed, it's great for spinning disks. And it was fairly decent for the intro SSDs. But that standard is going to have to change if we continue to deal with IOPS reaching from the hundreds of thousands into the millions. Uh, based on better and better and better SSD technology. All in all, NVMe technology is also under the same guise. It's a different style style interface for the controller stuff, but it's still principally the same. It's the protocol that dictates that and how much wiring you have to move data through. So with that, I thought you guys would get a real big kick out of this little bleeding edge research I've been doing. And that research may fall on its face. Uh, I, so far, it's holding up. If you understand the limitations of your controllers, then just pair up the SSD drives that are the healthiest for that particular deployment. And so, you know, you might not be able to support 96 hard drives, but you do pretty doggone good for 24. And that's where I think that's doable. Now, there's one other caveat to this. If you were doing, or if you're trying to do multiple disk arrays, and that means, let's say, five 24-port disk arrays, then you're going to have a lot of power consumption. The same is, is in effect in regards to parsing down your disks and using multiple disk arrays to balance out your controller usage. But actually, don't be too worried about that because it's driven by the controller's interface to the drives available, which means for the disk arrays, the voltage used is all that's going to be pulled. It's not going to automatically fully populate power output for 24 slots and you only have 12 discs in it it's only going to power 12 discs so it is cost effective still to a degree there's some wattage in there that you're going to lose and that's going to be an added cost but the bandwidth requirements that you're going to see coming back from the discs is going to be definitely nice hopefully you know times two but right now i've been able to play it at 1.5 1.7 I'll take it. It's that's that's real speed. So with that being said, I uh, hope this will help you guys out. Sorry about the side project while I was re redesigning my data center here, but I thought you guys would get a kick out of that little detail on how to cheat and getting your disks SSD disk arrays to work a little bit better. God bless and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Like if you uh, like. Uh, please hit the like button if you like this. Thanks.